MMAfighting.com presents Timeline, Garbrandt vs. Dillashaw. December 3rd, 2011, the Ultimate Fighter Finale 14, Las Vegas, Nevada. TJ Dillashaw is booked in his first official fight in the UFC against John Dodson in the finals of the competition reality show, The Ultimate Fighter. John Dodson would win the fight by knockout. However, TJ Dillashaw would go on to quickly recover from that loss by going on to win five of his next six fights with victories over Well Watson, Vaughn Lee, Issei Tamura, Hugo Viana, and Mike Easton. His only loss was to top-ranked Rafael Asuncao in a very closely contested split decision. May 24, 2014, UFC 173, Burrell vs. Dillashaw, Las Vegas, Nevada. TJ Dillashaw is set to face the champion, Henan Burrell, as the main event for UFC 173. Dillashaw enters the fight as a plus 650 underdog. I'm still so new to the sport. I mean, I've only been doing, I've only been doing MMA for four years, you know, and uh, I feel like I've grown with every fight. And that I needed that. I needed to realize that I could be that good. Um, and the way I could be that good is by relaxing, you know. I, I was a relaxed, fast pace, you know. It wasn't like relaxed where I'm gonna, like what Burrell's very good at, standing, like making you stand in front of him, slow you down, like keep the pace of what he wants, you know. Um, I, I, I just, you know, I gotta, I gotta just be aggressive, but also stay relaxed, if that makes any sense. You know, I was in college watching UFC. I was watching the first Ultimate Fighters when I was wrestling. I was like, dang, this is, this is crazy. These guys are awesome, you know? And I, was, I looked up to them, like what they did and the way, how it's just the most, the most competitive thing you could possibly do one-on-one. -on -one. Another man, you know, just trying to beat each other up and just uh, by me seeing like how great they could be and then I get that chance to be on TV, be the main headline and, and not only just go to being on a pay-per-view main card and getting on the poster, being the man, you know what I mean? Like, this is my time, like, it's crazy. I mean, it's, it's definitely surreal. In what would be considered one of the greatest upsets in UFC championship history, Dillashaw completely dismantles the champion in a star-making performance. Dominating all aspects of the fight, Dillashaw ends the match with a head kick KO. The plan was to move my feet a lot, not stand in front of him, use my angles, switch my stances up, and uh, just be the faster athlete tonight. And uh, after that, it was just kind of flow. You know, I didn't want to think about what I was going to do, just do what I was drilling in camp the entire time. I let Dwayne tell me what to do, and I just kind of reacted. You know, the plan was to take him down when need be, and you know, I just didn't feel I needed to. And for TJ, you're the first uh, from Team Alpha Male to capture UFC gold. How does that feeling? How does that feel to you to have been the first to do that for the team? Uh, it's crazy. I got into the gym looking up to all those guys. You know, I mean, they showed me the way, and I've been in a bunch of their, a lot of their title fights, camps, and uh, you know, it, it's just it, it doesn't. I don't know. It's kind of crazy for me to be the one to bring home the belt, and uh, it's a great feeling. January third, twenty fifteen. UFC 182, Jones versus Cormier, Las Vegas, Nevada. After earning a 5-0 professional record with all five wins by knockout, Cody No Love Garbrandt is signed to the UFC. His first match is against tough alumnus Marcus Brimage. Garbrandt defeats Brimage by TKO late in the third round. Garbrandt would go on to win his next two fights in the UFC, a decision victory at UFC 189 Mendez vs. McGregor over Henry Briones, and a TKO victory at UFC Fight Night Cowboy vs. Cowboy over Augusto Mendez. July 25, 2015, UFC on Fox 16, Dillashaw vs. Burrell 2, Chicago, Illinois. The rematch is set for a second time. Dillashaw was originally booked to face Burrell at UFC 177, but Burrell pulled out of the fight only hours before the weigh-ins due to weight-cutting issues. Dillashaw would instead successfully defend his title against Joe Soto. 14 months ago, you went into this fight, huge underdog. Now you're the champ, slight favorite. Which position do you prefer? Um, I'm, I'm kind of treating him the same, you know? I mean, I can't put any added pressure on the fight. Um, I prefer being the favorite, prefer being the champ, you know? Um, I just feel a bit more confident and just uh, gonna make sure I have fun and soak up being the champ, you know? How does this fight play out on Saturday? Um, you know, I'm, I'm definitely looking for the finish. I expect, you know, you gotta go in expecting a five-round war because you don't wanna get caught off guard and uh, underestimate anybody. But uh, 
I know that I'm the faster fighter. I got the better wrestling. I can take the fight where I want to. Um, who knows? Maybe I'll submit him this time, you know? Wow. Looking forward to it. Good luck to you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. But in Chicago, the rematch proves Dillashaw's first victory over Barrow was no fluke. Dillashaw dominates and defeats Barrow by TKO early in round four. Oh, he brought it. You know, he brought it the first round. He came out the first 30 seconds and it was swinging. You know, he, he set the pace fast early, you know, and I almost went a little bit too fast because of it. And, uh, you know, I should have been a little bit more controlled, but, you know, it was a fun fight. Would you say that you're the same fighter today that you were before that first fight, or did you need that, that first fight to put yourself over some kind of a hill to, to the next level? I mean, it definitely helped with my confidence, you know, that first that first fight against him definitely helped uh, for me to believe in what I'm doing is the right things, you know, what I'm training is the right way, um, the the drills that I'm doing, the everything, you know, everything I'm doing is working, so it, it definitely helps. January 17th, 2016, UFC Fight Night 81, Dillashaw versus Cruz, Boston, Massachusetts. Dillashaw is booked against the former bantamweight champion Dominic Cruz in Boston. How would you describe the road to this fight from the Barrow win in July up until this point? It feels like there's been a lot that's going on in your life outside of the gym and, and cage and whatnot. H has it been ideal or a little too much distractions? Oh, it's been entertaining to say the <laughs> least, you know, um, all the drama and the talk. Um, I guess it's done nothing but build up my fight though, mm -hmm. you know, it's brought a lot of attention to it from changing camps and all the drama from the Ultimate Fighter with Connor and all that. To, Dominic being, you know, over overly talkative, uh, more so than usual. So it's been, it's been fun, you know. Have you felt that you'll never be truly accepted as the undisputed champ until you beat him? Like, were you almost rooting for him to come back so you can get that notch on your belt? Not, I was rooting for him to come back. Not so much for me to feel the. I mean, I feel like the champ. I feel like I'm here. I feel like watching my level, watching the way I compete to compare to watching him. I think it's uh, to me there's no comparison you know but uh i wanted him to come back because of his name I wanted him to come back due to i felt bad for him being out for his injuries you know i mean that that's no way to go out that kind of sucks you know and uh when i got into the sport he was a champion the goal was to beat him you know and it's nice to actually get that chance to do it not to get into a whole he said she said thing but he says that when you guys were questioning him and talking about that he's you know uh not up to your level or and, and you started it yeah. And now you're saying that you're the martial artist and he's the one just trying to back it up. W what's your response to that? That's all fight related stuff. Yeah. You know, true. that's all confidence. Yeah. I mean, that's me portraying that I feel like I'm the better fighter. That's me saying that I'm the champion for the reason. It's not that I'm sitting there trying to pick you apart for who you are as a person or all the other drama. It's just me saying that I believe I'm a better fighter. And if you can't handle that, if things is trash talk, then that's unfortunate. In a highly competitive, technical, and entertaining bout, Cruz regains his title in a razor close split decision. Oh, uh, you know, Dominic's a very good fighter. Um, I do feel like I do feel like I won the fight. Um, you know, just pressure alone and controlling the octagon and landing the bigger strikes. You know, I know he got a few takedowns that I don't really feel like should be scored that that great with three seconds control. You know, total. Um, it's tough, man. It's a tough one to take. You know, I definitely didn't perform to my best either. You know, I, I maybe threw a little, a little too hard and could have touched a little bit and set some things up. And uh, you know, thinking back on it, yeah, I, I messed up. You know, I mean, but I, st I still think I won. I still think I won that fight. May 29th, 2016, UFC Fight Night 88, Almeida versus Garbrandt, Las Vegas, Nevada. Garbrandt is booked in his first UFC main event against fellow top undefeated prospect Thomas Almeida. No Love wins in devastating fashion with a first round knockout and hands Almeida the first loss of his career. August 20th, 2016, UFC 202, Diaz versus McGregor 2, Las Vegas, Nevada. Garbrandt returns to the cage on the prelims of the blockbuster Diaz versus McGregor rematch. He is set to face top-ranked veteran Takeya Mizugaki. So, uh, like I said, I previously stated that I have a UFC hit list, and it goes Don McCruz, TJ Dillashaw, John Lineker, and uh, you know Takeya is the default. You know, Saturday he's my next opponent. Uh, this Saturday, and then Don McCruz is, is next on the list. I feel like I, I deserve a title shot with a you know a knockout over Takeya, like Dominic. You know, um, so he went out there and smashed Takeya and got the you know. I think that might have been his only finish of his career in the past you know, decade he's fought. Um, you know, he got his title shot. So what's to say that I'm going out there and knocking these guys out with my third straight first round knockout. 
And like I said, the fans are behind it. He's asking for it. Um, I think that's a fight that needs, you know, needs to happen after uh, Takeya this Saturday. Garbrandt obliterates Mizugaki in a remarkable 48 seconds by knockout. It is the quickest loss of Mizugaki's 30-plus fight career. I go out there and knock out Thomas Almeida in my previous fight. Uh, that guy was pegged as in the next you know, contender as well. Uh, I finished him in the first round. Uh, it's three first round finishes. Uh, I don't see any other band weight doing that. And uh, obviously if the champ wants it, I want to fight. The fans want it. I believe I deserve the title shot. You know what? Dominic can say whatever he wants. That's what he does. He's so insecure with himself. And I don't know if he was, it's crazy. I don't know if he got picked on as a kid or what. I'm not going to go into that. But he tries to be a bully. It's like, man, I beat up bullies my whole life. I never, I never liked bullies, you know, picking on kids. And that's what he tries to do. He tries to pick on people. And it's because of his insecurities. And he gets, you know, into some fighters emotionally. And that's when you, you, you know, that's what he does. But like I said, it's, I'm focused. I've, I've been uh, dreaming of being a world champion since I was a teenager. And, and nothing's going to take that from me. December 30th, 2016. UFC 207. Nunes versus Rousey. Las Vegas, Nevada. Now 5-0 in the UFC with four knockouts, the UFC books Garbrandt to face the champion, Dominic Cruz, in the co-main event slot for UFC 207. You know, I, I like the sport. I like the UFC because they give you the opportunities, you know. Every fighter wants to complain about this and that, but really they give these opportunities. It's about you going out there and performing. You going out there performing and, you know, doing the media obligation, but also going out there performing and putting on shows and getting the finishes. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely gotten me experience to be here, but... This has been day one plan, being a world champion. No matter who it was, it just happened to be Dominic was the champion when I you know, envisioned it. And then now, it's my, like I said, it's my time, and he's a champion now. So, uh, like I said, when I first saw UFC fighting, uh, I didn't just want to be a fighter. I want to be the I want to be the greatest. I want to be the best fighter that I can be. Lord willingly, I'll go out here and on you know, December 30th knock out Dominic Cruz and whoever out of the TJ uh, Lineker fight of the best man win. Uh, defend him in 2017 for my first title defense. In a spectacular performance, Garbrandt defeats Cruz by unanimous decision and hands Cruz his first defeat ever at bantamweight. The fight is also awarded Fight of the Night honors. You know what, I was having so much fun in there. I kind of just got caught up in the fight and uh, you know, he's hurt a lot. I could have jumped on him, you know, took his back, knocked him out, you know, but he, he's tough. He, he's here for a reason. He's the best in the world and he's done what he's been able to do. It's Dominic Cruz, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I knew he was tough. You know, he's got a big old head, so I know he can absorb a lot of punishment. And uh, he was tough, you know. Uh, we were talking back and forth every time we hit one of each other and I loved it. That was fun. I remember looking in the third round when he had blood spewing down his face and, uh, you know, like I said, he was chattering back and forth with me the whole fight. And I said, you having fun yet? He didn't answer me, and I knew right there that was my fight. Um, you know what? Like I said, I was just living in the moment. You know, I, I was having fun out there and enjoying it. And, uh, you know, it was a great fight. I, I had so much fun in there. Um, but, you know, he's a great shit talker. You know, he, he knows very, you know, he knows a lot of good words. He speaks well. Shit, I couldn't reach. I was in the third grade. You know, I barely graduated high school. So I knew what I was getting into with him. I just knew I didn't get emotional and let his words and his trash talk, you know, get me emotional in there. I know I had to stick to my game plan and my strategy and uh, I knew I would take over. I'm more dominant, faster, I'm the better fighter in there and that proved from one round to the, the fifth round. I knew Dominic was different, the way he was acting, um, getting very emotional and I could feel that presence off him, you know. There was a different uh, presence of him all week, all fight camp. I really got into his head and uh, that, that showed. He fought emotionally and uh, he couldn't, he didn't have an answer for me. Um, I truly believe that I'm the better fighter, the faster fighter, the stronger fighter, and I wanted it more. But hats off to him. He, he's amazing. He's great. But uh, yeah, I, I train hard and I believe in myself. That's the thing, self-belief. And, uh, you know, having a great team, coaches, and, and, and people that care about me. Earlier on the UFC 207 card is the former champion, TJ Dillashaw. After a rematch and victory over Rafael Asensio at UFC 200, Dillashaw is booked against dangerous brawler John Lineker. The winner of the fight will most likely be the number one contender. The former champ dismantles the overmatched Lineker. Oh, I fought the way I should, uh, the way I thought I was going to fight. You know, it was a perfect game plan. You know, me, Dwayne, and my coaches at uh, Elevation Fight Team with Elliot and Leister, 
knowing that my wrestling and my grappling would outclass him, um, keeping him at distance with my kicks because he was so much shorter than I was, just not playing his game, you know? I mean, it was kind of crazy to me how many people do play his game and get into a slugfest with him, put their heads down, and and go crazy, you know? So I just wanted to prove that uh, toughness doesn't get you the belt, that you got to be smart and you got to be well-rounded. And you had the unique opportunity to then sit back and watch yeah. the championship fight. Give us your initial thoughts on, on Cody Garbrandt's performance. I'm impressed. You know, I thought Cruz was getting into his head so much and having his, his buddies in his corner, man, or whoever it was, getting in his head and trying to get his feathers ruffled. And for him to keep his composure the way he did, I was really impressed. And he had a couple words for you when he finished. Yes. Uh, what, what did you think? I mean, were you expecting that? I mean, is there any, any hard feelings there? What, I mean, what, what did you think about it? I don't have hard feelings. I'm sure it's going to be played up big time for all the drama and stuff. No hard feelings. I mean, maybe a little bit with the, with the, with the unnecessary trash talk when I'm not even fighting him, you know what I mean? But uh, all I can say is thank you because now I'm going to get a title shot. You know what I mean? For sure with the drama leading up to this is thank you. <laughs> November 4th, 2017. UFC 217. Bisbing versus George St. Pierre. New York City, New York. The champion, Cody Garbrandt, is set to defend his belt against former champion and former training partner, TJ Dillashaw, as the co-main event for UFC 217 at Madison Square Garden in New York City.